Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Pass Grab Bag, a weekly podcast reviewing games from the Game Pass collection, bringing you three unique perspectives from a varying skill range. I am the leader of this flock, Andrew. With me, kid who can't find his glasses, Keith. Hello. And I'm the annoying goose, aren't I? <laughs> and the annoying goose that won't stop honking, Liz. Hey, guys. No, that's kind of offensive, don't you think? Not really. I mean, if you think about it, I keep eating your Christmas present, so I mean, it's kind of out. Have you been eating my chocolates? No, I haven't eaten any yet. I was trying to be nice, but I did drink one of your beers. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this week was kind of a list pick. I kind of picked it for her, but I knew this was a game she was going to like. And it is Untitled Goose Game by House House Studios, which is, this is their second game. And the best way to describe this game is it is a top-down puzzle stealth game where you literally just play a goose and you just try your hardest to harass this poor little village you start off as a goose and you're given a to-do list and you just have these tasks to essentially just annoy the village and this game is just i when i saw this game i was like this is right up Liz's alley for the most part any game i think that has an animal is right up Liz's alley so starting off going around liz was this a game or a pass for you i'm gonna give it a game all right i'll just leave it at that just a soft game okay (laughs) Yeah, it's just yeah, like Keith just said, it's a soft game. A soft. That game. was my a more of a question. If you're asking me, this is an absolute game. The game's absolutely hilarious. It's a lot of fun to play, and not hard, but kind of harder than I expected. Yeah, for me, I'm with you, Keith. I was actually going to say this is a must game. Ooh, I like that. It's kicking off the new year, right? Yeah, I know. It's something that's super simple. But a lot of fun and just has like a lot of personality to it and it's definitely something that like i feel like anybody could just pick up it's not very long it's a lot of fun i definitely think this is worth your time to at least look at because all of that i think the game's like a gig big so it maybe takes like five minutes to download unless you have like the worst internet in the world but yeah all three of us give it a game so starting off i guess the story of this game is you're just a goose that decides to harass the village And the whole purpose is you're actually trying to collect a bell that's in this miniature village. And you're just a goose being a goose, being a jerk. Well, kind of, because you have this to-do list and you're creating this chaos in the village or town or whatever. But I noticed that some of the people are just mean to the goose right away. So it's kind of like you don't really know who to root for. And I also feel like a lot of people have very strong feelings about geese. Oh, geese are the worst. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you've been chased by one as a kid, I mean, you're going to have strong feelings. And I think, I don't know if that's why this game is kind of like a sleeper hit. Everyone is playing this game, and I really don't think that they thought it was going to be as big as it is. No, they definitely No, this game was created sort of by accident, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, the kind of the whole story of it is one person in the studio had a picture of like a stock footage of a goose. And one day it just sparked conversation and people were like, oh, yeah. Like, what if you had a game as a goose? And they ended up kind of building on it. And the game ended up getting its title because they were picked to show the game off at, like, a festival. And they're like, crap, we don't have a name for this game. So they would first put it as a placeholder, as Untitled Goose Game. But, of course, the audience loved it. They thought it was a hilarious name. And so they ended up sticking with it. I actually did see they thought about, for an alternate name, Some Like It Honk. Which I also kind of <laughs> liked. I actually thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. But they didn't get much thought to it. They, they just stuck with Untitled Goose Game, which I still think is actually a good I pick, too. I like Untitled Goose Game is so perfect for the name of the game, though. Yeah, because it's, it's hard to kind of describe what this game is. Well, it is, yeah. Like, as we go through it, whether it's just, like, the way the characters are designed, nobody has a name in the game. The goose doesn't have a name. It's just, you're a goose. And it's an untitled town. Nobody has names. They're just the gardener, the people in the back garden, whatever. And yeah. I read in an interview that they originally were going to have this take place in what Americans would call a state fair. It's not, not an American company, but it's something like that. And they started creating it and they realized how much work that would be, all the people, all the interactions. And I kind of feel like it feels like a small game. It is. And I also like how the interactions take place. Like there's a lot of eye contact, even though there's no eyes in this game. None of the characters have eyes, but there is a lot of stare downs. And I thought that was really cool. It just felt like a more intimate game. So I'm kind of glad that they didn't go that route. Before we get too far. I have some theories on a little bit of like a hidden story of this game. I know you love you love my theories, Keith. 
So I was like, I'm gonna give some Keith some theories in this game. One of my one of my theories is you are literally like a spawn of Satan. Because who's writing you these to-do lists? You just come out of nowhere, you're just this goose, you go up a river, and you're like just harassing people and just making this they're like miserable. They're just doing simple day tasks, and you're just going up, biting people, stealing things, trashing their house. You make an old man fall on his butt. Yeah, but you're given a to-do list, and it's like, who's writing this to-do list? So you're either being controlled by either Satan or someone like Loki, the god of mischief. Which... Or maybe he's writing his own list with his webbed feet. <laughs> <laughs> but my other theory is this game actually takes place in Purgatory. Because all these people are just doing really monotonous tasks, but not getting anything accomplished. To me, you ever seen the show The Good Place? It seems very similar to the to me to that, where it seems like, oh, this is paradise. You know, these people are in this nice, quaint little village, but actually it's like a purgatory. And you are just a demon there to harass people and just subtly annoy people so much that they end up hating their lives. You love that purgatory theory. Oh yeah, my purgatory theory I think is the better one. Every single to every single game that you don't have a theory for, it's uh, I think it's purgatory. I like your first idea better because they have their jobs and everything. They... But they're not accomplishing anything. Like there's a woman that's literally carrying a box back and forth, but not doing anything with it. There's a guy who's perpetually playing darts, but can never hit the bullseye. There's the two gardeners and painters, but she can never finish her painting. The gardener can never finish his Which, work. Can I point out, she has no qualms with taking her neighbor's things. And her neighbor is so nice that whenever the goose steals something from her, he immediately throws it back. And she's just hoarding all of his stuff. No, if anything, the neighbor's awful. Because you put anything in the guy's yard and he throws it over like it's trash. He goes, this isn't mine, it must be hers. And throws it over to her side as if it's trash. And meanwhile, though, he's losing everything and she's gaining everything. So She's getting nice trash. Guy. I mean, if you if you trash? consider getting no. trash. Like, like, for instance, like, if I stole the bow, he would throw the bow back over. It's her belongings. But whenever... He doesn't his... know that. How do you know? Because you could literally put trash. You could literally grab a piece of trash, put it in his yard, and he'll throw it over to the woman. I don't know if they actually wanted to put in, like, an actual story in this game. I know you're just, like, a goose trying to collect a bell. But I feel like there was more to the story because right at the beginning, you see you have a big collection of bells. And some of them are really old and some of them are new. So you've been doing this for a while. That's also why I was kind of thinking it was purgatory, because you're just going back over and over again, torturing these people and collecting the, the bell of theirs. See, I think it's sort of, if I were to look at it that way, I think that's just what you do. You're just a goose that harasses this town, and you steal their bell. You like shiny things. Which is very possible. I mean, goose gen geese generally are just the worst creatures. They're actually terrifying, too. Have you ever seen a picture of a goose's tongue? Oh, they're It nasty. has teeth on they got, it. They got big old teeth. They have teeth on their tongues, which is absolutely horrifying. I think all big birds are. Yeah. Emus, swans. Ostriches. All terrifying. Yeah. No, but thank you. Anyway, enough of guess of theories. What did you guys think of the gameplay of this game? Fantastic. On every level. <laughs> I will say, I did find it kind of weird that, like, if you were running with the, with the goose and you try to take a turn right away, like, the goose wanted to go in its own way. It was well, really Well, yeah, you're running and it, it doesn't turn on a dime. No, I know, but it didn't happen all the time. And when it did, I was I tried to go left, and my goose was still going straight. And I'm like, no, no, go left, go left. Oh, man. And, and then your goose would get cooked. Chased. Cooked? It's a phrase. I'm going to use so many geese puns in this in this episode. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so excited for it. Be prepared. <laughs> well, so they actually, though, do have something i don't know if it was on a load screen because i don't think there really are any load screens in this game except maybe no not really briefly when you go into it but it was either that or just like a tip that pops up and it tells you you can't turn well when sprinting so i kind of don't have oh. much sympathy for you liz yeah i didn't read that i <laughs> Wait, mean it wasn't a huge something? deal can either. we mark this day as oh, the gosh. hundredth time <laughs> or how many episodes have we done like I said, it wasn't really a big deal. When you're being chased, you can go into the bushes, you can go around a corner, and it really isn't that terrible to have to restart. So if you steal something and the person does catch up to you, you can just steal it right back. Yeah, that's what I think I liked about this game. It's it's not hard at all. It's if you do get forgiving. kicked out or anything like that or caught, you just drop the thing you're holding. But yeah, as Liz said, you can easily grab it back or grab something near them and, and make them irritate. Them. Yeah, distract them and they'll drop the item right where they're standing and you can just pick it right back up. So yeah, I love that this game isn't punishing at no, all. No, and that's one of the things that I loved most about this game is it's so accessible. So 
we've been doing this for a while. Whenever I'm playing a game, if my girlfriend is over, she just kind of looks at it, maybe asks me what what's going on, but then doesn't care. This is the only game she's actually ever watched me play and was genuinely entertained by. So, even as someone who couldn't care less about video games, this, she found this game entertaining. So, it has something for everybody, and what I loved going back to the lack of it being punishing is that even when you screwed something up, it generally ended up being kind of funny too. Because like you said, you just had to like pick up something else and do all kinds of stuff like that. Yep. I also thought it was funny that all these people are putting up uh, no goose signs. And they had to show a picture of a goose with like the line through it. And it's like, oh yeah, because the goose can read and is not going to go in now. I thought that was really funny. Like the entire town kind of turns against you. Yeah, I also do think it's funny that even though they put up the goose signs, like they still don't do anything extra to harass you or get rid of you. You can still just kind of wander around their yards. As long as you don't grab anything, nobody really cares. There's like some people that'll try to shoo you away, like the shopkeeper, but for the most part, people don't care. Even when they put up a goose yeah, sign. Yeah, the shopkeeper and the bar, or the pub at the very end, those are the only two people that actually try and kick you out of anywhere. Now, you said you found this game really funny, Keith. Would you say this game had you quacking up? I wouldn't because ducks quack and geese honk. They're both very similar. So nope, it's I'm a goose, not joke. a duck. You're the you're the guy who plays Overwatch and starts yelling about Winston calling him monkey. So learn your animals. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, no, an ape is not a chimpanzee or a monkey. Are you one of those people that's like, hey, look at the dog? And you're like, um, that's a husky. How dare you? No, dogs are different because we're talking about breeds. Chimpanzees yeah. and apes are not a different breed. They're different animals. <laughs> no, they're, they're different breeds. Anyway. I didn't know this was going to be a zoology episode. <laughs> no. The honking actually did come in handy, though, because I, for the life of me, could not get the old man to fall off the stool. And I actually watched a video because I was like, uh, like, the timing was wrong. I just couldn't do it. And sometimes in games, there's this, like, little hiccup for me that I can't do it and and whenever I knew it wasn't gonna work I would honk and he would jump back up and so that actually really helped me with that part of the game yeah the honk was always like a quick way to kind of distract people or like kind of pause things besides honking honking and grabbing you used quite a bit I didn't find much purpose for you opening your wings because at first it was like oh open your wings to flap so I was like oh do I get some sort of flying ability you don't and there really isn't much purpose for the wings well it's during the show because that's like the only part I can think of but it's so majestic it is I thought it looked it. really cool the only thing cool. I kind of used it for was for like if I was trying to chase like the boy too but you, it wasn't necessary. No, but it did. If you, you could widen yourself, you could actually, like, adjust his course a little bit better. It wasn't much. I'm not saying it's, like, some hot tip about the game, but it did kind of work. But otherwise, yes, it was a really useless mechanic, other than just kind of being a little bit funny. Yeah, so I felt like since there wasn't many abilities or mechanics in this game, the puzzles, for the most part, I thought were very easy. They really were. It was mostly just a, a matter of could you kite the you know the character you needed far enough away by grabbing other items to get the ones that you needed. So there wasn't a lot of strategy for it, but I just I felt like I was always entertained by it while I was doing it. But I think the other reason why too I say this game is kind of a must play for everyone is I love how short this game is. I kind of wish it was a little bit longer, but there's what five areas about in this game and each one you're maybe spending 30 minutes in and you could progress to the next area so you can beat this game in like an hour or two no kind i think of. it's longer than i well well casually, kind of. it's, it's weird longer than that like i actually probably took i think maybe four and a half well if you do so you can like beat the game in quotations because you get an achievement saying thanks for playing our game you beat it when you collect the bell, but like that's honestly about the halfway point because then you're given a bunch of more stuff to do and like some more stuff kind of happens around and there's still like a, quite a bit to do. So it's more of a halfway point, but I guess, yeah, you kind of beat the game within like an hour or two. Well, yeah, see, I actually, I didn't progress an area until I beat the to-do list for it either. So I took a lot longer to beat the game, I guess, in that regard because I went through all the to-do lists aside from, to your point, the to do as well list is what they called it but ultimately yeah you have i think it's four areas where you have actual checkpoints to get through or five let's say you have the farm you have like the market area you have the garden you well, have no, the it's, pub 
I was going to say. And then you the, have the mini it's, village. It's the garden, the shop, the back garden, the pub, and then the mini town. Ah, so very similar to what I just said, but thank you for mansplaining that, Keith. Well, yeah, you were just, because well, you were making up weird things. It wasn't a farm. It was a garden. Sorry. Tomato, tomato. Sorry. Goose, duck. You know, got to get things right here. Oh, dear. <laughs> Friday, Monday. Same thing. I do like that the puzzles in this game, they actually made sense. I hate when you're doing a puzzle and you, like, have to put a square on a circle to make something open. Like, this actually made sense, I feel like. And so the puzzles were actually a lot more fun. There was actually one that I really thought that I knew how to do. I ended up looking it up because I thought I was doing it the right way. Same with, like, the stool. And then I had found out that it was actually done a different way. It's when you have to have the goose thrown over the fence. And then when I found out that I was doing it wrong and what it was, I was like, oh, that actually that makes I still, sense. That's one I actually still haven't figured out. I'm still, I'm still stuck on that one, I guess. Oh. I thought that you, I figured it out. I thought that you had to have the ribbon on your neck and then be thrown over because you would think that you were like the statue. Turns out it's not that. I won't say what it is. That way people haven't. That was it. that's what I had already tried and it didn't work. So I figured that wasn't it. But I'm still working. Don't tell me, Liz, and I won't look it up. Sometimes it's such a burn to be the smartest person in this podcast. Well, it's hard because <laughs> there are some times where I was doing the right thing. But I wasn't doing it the right way, and so it, it would take me a lot of tries, and I thought that's what was happening. I was like, okay, where do I have to put myself to do it? And I looked it up on YouTube, and I was like, crap! Because if I had known that it wasn't the right thing, I would have kept trying different ways. Yeah, no, don't, don't get me wrong. I actually thought the same theory too, Liz, where I was like, all right, if I put a ribbon and make the guy think I'm the statue. But I noticed every time he just noticed the ribbon, and it's, you couldn't fool him. But uh, then I figured out the solution. Pat but yourself on the back but that was that was probably the hardest puzzle. I feel like for the most part, when it comes to a hard puzzle in this game, it's more like tedious, like trying to move something a great distance that isn't easy to move. It wasn't like so far that it would became miserable. So this game, that's what I like about it. Everything in it is just short and sweet. Uh, there was one point where you have to put a bunch of things on a picnic blanket. And I made the mistake of having the farmer see me pulling one of the items, and I'd already done almost all the other ones. I did that, and he ends up, like, going to start grabbing everything. You're like, no, 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 no. That's when I was, like, trying to grab his keys, grabbing the rake, trying to distract him. And I ended up doing it, but it just made it a lot more annoying. <laughs> oh, yeah, that part, I went through a whole lot of struggles trying to get him to just stop taking things off that dang picnic blanket. And that was before I had really started to figure the game out, too, so it was like... <laughs> No, stop it. He's kept going. I also want to say that I thought that it looked really cool when the goose went in the water. For some reason, I just thought, yeah. swimming, I already said this word earlier with his wings, but it, it was really majestic looking. It was kind of cool. But you're not in water much, unfortunately. I, I wish there was more like water sections yeah. in this game, which is funny because the past few podcasts, I'm like, stop putting water <laughs> levels. And now it's like, oh man, I wish there was more water in this game. But it almost feels like you're gliding on water when you go from walking on the ground to that. I don't know. It, it was a cool feeling. The next thing I think is fantastic with this game. I'm really curious if for once, Liz, you noticed... What did you guys think of the music? I thought it was all right. I mean, I, I liked it. I wasn't... Did you notice it? I did. I will say the, the honking I thought would get annoying, but it didn't. The thing I liked... Well, you distract me now, Liz. The thing I loved about the honking is when you picked up like certain things, like the glass bottle, and you honk in a glass bottle, or you grab a harmonica, and you just blow in the harmonica when you honk. I didn't do or that. Or the soap. When you blow, you, you, you blow bubbles with the soap. But, uh... Back to what I asked. I loved the music in this game. I think it's just a piano. It definitely fit. I thought it yeah. was nice. It it normally is like this casual piano playing, but then if like you're being chased, it picks up its tempo. If you're being sneaky, it gets quiet and slow. It it works really, really well with this game. There's just like no other instruments. It's really simple, but it works so well. Which I like the music that tells you if someone's chasing you. Because you can zoom out, but sometimes I wasn't aware that the person was that close to me, and it would let me know that I was actually being chased, and I had to hurry yeah, up. Yeah, I, I thought the music was amazing, and it's actually, it's a pretty short loop of piano for each area that you're in. So if you do sit, like, I had, I think, just the menu up for, for a bit, and I was walking around doing some things. It loops pretty shortly, but it's actually not annoying, because it's just a simple piano melody, and yeah. it's not overbearing so like you said it's just so perfect and i think it all ties in perfectly to everything that this game is like i said it's an untitled goose game 
It's like simple bare bones music, simple bare bones graphics, simple bare bones gameplay. Yeah, the music in this game is super simple, which I like. But the other thing that was also really simple in this game is the art style. But once again, I think it just fits really well with this game. Everything was easy to kind of see and figure out what it was. I think it made the puzzles kind of easier to figure out. The streets aren't littered with like unnecessary stuff. As Liz said, the people's faces are very simple. Like they don't really have eyes. They have a nose. There's no real talking in this game. So I loved the art style in this game as well. I think well. it's perfect. And actually the one thing that's funny is we've mentioned is that faces have no eyes, but the goose does. The goose has eyes. It's because it's a demon. Confirms my I theory. Mean, I'll still take that over your purgatory theory because at least it's not purgatory again. I mean, it's a demon in purgatory. <laughs> it's a goose. Yeah, I love the art style. But the things that they didn't add, like they didn't need. I thought it was perfect. And then finally, of course, the other reason why I think this game is a must-play for anybody is the achievements. The achievements in this game are very simple. And you unlock them enough because this game's pretty quick, so you constantly get these achievements. And when you do the new game plus, you get achievement literally for everything you do on the to-do list. Yeah, I actually got really excited with the achievements. They kept popping up. And then I actually wanted to keep getting them. Usually I don't focus on them at all, but I was like, what can I do to get more achievements? Because I ended up getting quite a bit. I was pretty impressed. I didn't do the timed ones. And then there's the last one that you have to cross off everything. And I didn't do because I didn't do the timed ones. But besides that, I got all of them. And I got quite a bit of achievements. So I was, I was How happy. many did you look up, Liz? I got them all the way that I was supposed so you to. They see you looked up the, the one about getting thrown over the, the fence. No, that's one of the to-do list checks. Yeah, it's an achievement as well. I didn't know that. That's I think that's one of the the secret ones. Yeah. So Cheater. I oh, no. How is it cheating if you're doing the to-do list and you naturally get them? <laughs> I think you looked it up. That's not yeah, natural. Yeah, but they're not. But they're not secret. It says secret achievement, but I don't know what it is. All the other ones were from the to-do list. There wasn't any like sneaky <laughs> achievements. I think you're just a little jealous that I beat you this week. Just saying. No, how how just, many? I've looked up so many puzzles and admitted it. I just, I think it's funny that you're getting mad about it. <laughs> Not to honk my own <laughs> horn over here, but I didn't look up any of them. So Good for you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't look up any of mine. But yeah, the, I think it's kind of weird. I don't know that I'd call it a new game plus per se, because you can actually do everything on that to-do list while you're playing the game, or at least most of it, because it, it comes up as to-do as well, and you can see that when you're playing the game normally, and they're just blanked out. When you beat the game, it opens up and it shows you all of them. But that said, I think this game just offers so much replayability that, and it still even probably would take you less than 10 hours to, to go back and do everything. Liz, I mean, looked up some of it, but you know. She beat it in probably under 10 Sore hours. Sore loser. Bet. I'd say less than five hours. But I also feel like when you say replayability, obviously you, you play it through once and then you reset it and you do the timed ones. But besides that, I mean, would you really pick it up again? Probably not. That's the only thing that I kind of don't like about it is that there really isn't more content to unlock. And so once you play it, I, I don't think there's really any reason to pick I it suppose. up. I suppose. I I guess it's not a game that I would sit and spend hours on again, but I think you can always pick it up and play it, and it's just its just kind of entertaining. It's a game I think I could always find relaxing if I just wanted to kill some time and or, I don't know, it's a good, like, relaxing day after you've been angry at people all day and you just want to honk at them. I think it's fun. Keith's just angry at people all day. <laughs> Mostly. People are too people-y, so... You like geese better. See, I have a weird love-hate relationship with geese. I, Well, on one hand, I agree with Andrew. They're basically the worst animal. They're kind of <laughs> hilarious. And and this comes from the fact that I used to work in an office park that there'd just be flocks of geese that would wander around, and they were just really funny. They always made me laugh. So I kind of love geese. But they're gross. And they poop all over thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you can usually avoid them, you know what I mean? I feel like seagulls are worse, because not only will they come up right to you and steal your food and poop on you, but Oh no, these geese were nasty. Them. They would they would like hang out right near the buildings and you could avoid them for the most part, but I used to kinda walk close to them because it was funny to make them honk at me. They were just entertaining. So anyway, welcome to our zoology episode of Game Pass Zoology Grab Bag. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It was, it was very clever. 
But uh, Keith, how did everyone do with achievements this week? So Liz did come in first. She had 20 of them, 585 points. Uh, wow. You beat me by one achievement Booyah. with 495 and then at 14, and I had 13 achievements at 480. So we all did pretty good. The shame, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys sick this week, or like... <laughs> no. I've just been very busy. I'm sorry, I have a life. <laughs> Oof. You're forgiven. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate you, Liz. <laughs> so, Liz, getting to final thoughts, what did you think of Untitled Goose Game? Ooh, can I go last? <laughs> I re- am really curious what your scores are. Oh my gosh. So I'll start things off here, then. And I'm going to steal your words from the beginning of the episode, Andrew. This is a must game, I think. I loved everything about it. I thought it it just made me laugh pretty much the whole time. I never really got frustrated when I was, if I wasn't able to figure something out. I just kept trying different things. Eventually, I'd figure them out. Maybe I didn't, but fine. I I won't mind going back for it. The music was great. It fit the game. The art style fit the game. Everything just fit on this game. And I'm going to start this year off with a solid 90. Wow. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. So as I said in the beginning with my original comment that Keith stole, yeah, this is a must game for me because it's simple. It's very accessible. It is a lot of fun. Nothing had me, like, honking out loud (laughs) to add more puns. But uh, it is just really cute. I love the art style. I love the music. This game is really relaxing. It's simple. Like, it's nothing that really makes you, like, overly think on things. It's just, it's a lot of fun. So for me, I'm actually giving this game an 85. My biggest complaint is that it, it's short and there's not much to do with it after. There's uh, yeah, some more stuff to do with the to-do li- to do list, but nothing that was like that creative. And as Liz said, once you beat it, you're kind of done with it. So I'm going to give this game an 80. I did really like it, but for me, I think that with the lack of replayability, once you've fully finished it, or at least for me, I wouldn't replay it. That kind of knocked off some points. I do think the art style is really great. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought there was a lot of humor in it. I I just really, really liked it. Looking at um Metacritic, there weren't enough critics uh, for Xbox to have a score, but the users gave it a 6.3. And I like looking at the other ones because there really weren't that many reviews. PC 79 and 6, Switch 81 and 7.7, and PS4 80 and 5.9. Um, I'm actually really curious what it'd be like on Switch, because someone wrote that it felt special on Switch, but on Xbox they didn't feel the same way. And I think the big issue people had was the value for money. So we've talked about how it's only a couple hours long, and a lot of people said that they would pay like 10 bucks for it. And obviously it's on Game Pass, so we're not paying that, but I think that's the biggest problem that people have with the game. I mean, when I first saw this game, I, I heard great things about it, and I was like, I'm kind of tempted to get it. But I heard that it was short, so I was like, nah, hopefully it'll come on Game Pass. And then, yeah, luckily the uh, Game Pass Twitter announced, and I was like, yes, going to be definitely playing that on Game Pass. But I think that's going to do it for us this week. We kind of wanted to do a quick episode. We are going to be doing a listener pick coming up, but uh, with the holidays, we're like, we either do a quick game or we're not going to get an episode out. So we really want to do Untitled Goose Game anyway, so we ended up putting this one on. We want to thank our fan, Mason Eaton, for giving us a nice review on iTunes. And if you would like a shout-out on this episode, you could write us an email at gamepassgrabbag at gmail.com. Or you could follow us on Twitter at gpgbpod. Or if you follow us on our Podbean app or write us a nice review on iTunes. But I've been your hardcore gamer host, Andrew. You can follow me on Xbox Live at Firebird01952. We also have a club on there which i always end up forgetting to uh mention but we did a couple new get a new members there so welcome to the club guys uh if you ever want to see what we're doing what we're playing please follow us on any of the things i just mentioned which i'm too lazy to repeat you can just rewind the episode (laughs) but yeah i will also be trying to put up a schedule as to when i'm going to stream certain games uh upcoming games so if you ever want to watch i'll put up a schedule you can try to come on and say hi to me while i'm playing but yeah that'll do it for me and I'm still Keith. I think I'll say some things this week. Ah, Keith's gonna I put an effort. Keith Lynch one two one. My Xbox Live is a little fluffy. <laughs> My cat's name is Milo. <laughs> Liz. And yeah, I don't see what any you? Uh, pictures of your cat on Twitter. I'm pretty sure there's at least one. Right, you should put more. 
And I'm Liz the Noob, gamer tag coming on Dean, and I'm on Twitter at Liz the Noob, Noob is E W. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope to see you guys again next week. Bye. Talk to you later. Nice.